Hey guys, this is Heyman from Edureka. Today in this session, we'll be talking about cloud security. Without making any further ado, let's move on to today's agenda to understand what all will be covered in today's session. So we'll start off this session by discussing the why and what of cloud security. After that, we'll be seeing how we can choose between a public, a private, and a hybrid cloud. After that, we'll see whether cloud security is really a concern among companies who are planning to make a move on the cloud. So once you have established that cloud security is really important, we'll see how secure should you make your application. After that, we'll be looking into the process of troubleshooting a threat in the cloud. After that, we'll be implementing that process in AWS. So guys, this is our agenda for today. Are we clear with it? Okay, I'm getting confirmations. So Dinesh, Shivani, Jason, Bibek has given me a confirmation. Okay guys, since most of you are clear, let's move on to the first topic of today's session that why cloud security is important. So let's take an example here and talk of three very popular companies, LinkedIn, Sony and iCloud. So LinkedIn in 2012 experienced a cyber attack wherein 6.5 million usernames and passwords were made public by the hackers. After that, Sony experienced the most aggressive cyber attack in history wherein their highly confidential files like their financials, their upcoming movie projects were made public by the hackers, right? And this made a huge impact on the business front of Sony. iCloud, which is a service from Apple, also experienced a cyber attack wherein personal or private photos of users were made public by the hackers. Right. So guys, now in all these three companies, you can see there's a breach in security which needs to be addressed, right? So cloud security has to be addressed. It needs to be there in the cloud computing world. So since now we've established that cloud security is really important, let's move on to understand what cloud security actually is. So what is cloud security? So it is a use of latest technologies and techniques in programming to secure your application which is hosted on the cloud or the data which is hosted on the cloud and the infrastructure which is associated with the cloud computing, right? And the other part of this is that whatever security techniques or whatever techniques or technology that you're using to secure your application should be updated as frequently as possible because every day new threats are coming up, right? Every day there are new workarounds to problems, right? And you should be able to tackle these problems or, or these workarounds. And hence you should upgrade your security as frequently as possible, right? Moving ahead, let's understand how we can choose between a public, a private, and a hybrid cloud. So we've understood that what cloud security actually is. Now let's talk in terms of security and understand how we can choose between a public, a private, and a hybrid cloud. So if you were to choose between these three infrastructures, what should be our basis of judging which cloud we should choose, right? So you would opt for a private cloud when you have highly confidential files that you want to store on the cloud platform, right? Now there are two stories or there are two ways of thinking a private infrastructure. You can either opt for private servers or private infrastructure on your own premises or you can look up for servers, dedicated servers by your cloud provider, right? So that all comes under the private infrastructure. Then we have the public cloud infrastructure. In public cloud infrastructure, you would basically use websites that are public facing. So say if you have a products page where you have application which can be downloaded by the public, so that can be hosted on the public cloud because there's nothing that has to be secret over there, right? So things like websites, Things like data that is not confidential and you don't mind public seeing it can be hosted on your public cloud. The third infrastructure is the most important infrastructure which is the hybrid infrastructure and this is the setup that most companies go for, right? So what if there's a use case wherein you have private files of highly confidential files and a website as well? right so if you have this kind of use case you might go for a hybrid infrastructure which is kind of best of both worlds you get the security or the comfort of the private infrastructure and the cost effectiveness of the public cloud as well right so you the, your hybrid cloud is basically if you want your highly confidential be stored on your own premises and your website be hosted on your public cloud this infrastructure would be hybrid cloud infrastructure. 
So basically you would choose a private cloud if you have you know, highly confidential files, if you choose a public cloud, if you have files that are not that important or files that you don't mind people seeing and you would choose a hybrid cloud infrastructure if you want best of both worlds, right? So this addresses how we can choose between a public, private and hybrid cloud. Moving on, let's understand whether cloud security is really a concern. So we have discussed that why cloud security is important. We've discussed what is cloud security, right? Now let's talk about whether this really makes sense, right? So if we say that cloud security is really important and there's no one who is actually thinking about it, there's no point, right? So let's see if companies who are making a move to the cloud actually think about cloud security. So here's a Gartner research on companies who are making a plan to move to the cloud or who has not moved to the cloud yet, right? So what are their concerns? Why are not they doing so? So uh, the topmost reason listed by these companies was security and privacy concerns, right? So as you can see, these companies who want to make a move to the cloud are also worried about their security on the cloud infrastructure. And this makes it clear that cloud security is actually very important, right? Now, we have understood that cloud security is really important. We have understood that companies are looking for cloud security, are actually following the practices for cloud security. But now, how secure should you make your application, right? What is the extent to which you should make your application secure? So let us start with this line. So it is said that cloud security is a mixture of art and science, right? Why? Let's see that. So it's a science because Obviously, you have to come up with new technologies and new techniques to protect your data, to protect your application, right? So it's a science because you have to be prepared with the technical part. But it is art as well. Why? Because you should create your techniques or you should create your technologies in such a way that your user experience is not hindered. Let me give you guys an example. Suppose you make an application, right? And for making it secure, you think, okay, after every three or four minutes, I'll ask the user for a password, right? From the security point of view, it seems okay, but from the user's point of view, it is actually hindering his user experience, right? So you should have that artist in you that you should understand when to stop or till where should you extend your security techniques. And also, you should be creative as to what security techniques can be implemented so that the user experience is not hindered. For example, there is a two-step authentication you get there when you're logging into your Gmail account, right? So if you know your password, that is not enough. You should have a, an OTP as well to log into your Gmail account, right? So this might be hindering with user experience to some extent but it is making your application secure as well, so, right? So you should have a balance between your science and the art part that you're applying on the cloud security. Moving on, let's now discuss the process of troubleshooting a threat in the cloud. So let's take an example here. So like you're using Facebook, right? And you get a random message from some person saying there is some kind of story, like you usually get that while you're using Facebook, right? That such and such thing happened and click here to know more, right? You get that similar kind of message here. And by mistake, you actually click on that link. You didn't know that it's a spam and you click on that link. Now what happens is all the users that are there or all your friends on the Facebook chat gets that message, right? And they get furious as to why this kind of spam message is there in their inbox, right? And you get scared. Now you get angry as well and you have to bring your frustration out on Facebook. So you contact Facebook and you get to know that they already know the problem and they're already working on it and they're near to their solution. Now, how did they come to know that there is this kind of problem and needs to be solved, right? So basically cloud security is done in three stages. So the identification process or the threat identification process is done in three stages. The first stage is monitoring data. So you have AI algorithms which know what a normal system behavior is. And any deviation from this normal system behavior creates an alarm. And this alarm is then monitored by the cloud experts or the cloud security experts sitting over there. And if there's a threat, they see there's a threat, they go to the next step, which is gaining visibility, right? So you should understand what caused that problem. 
right? And or who caused that problem precisely? So your cloud security experts uh, look for tools which give them the ability to look into the data and find or pinpoint that statement or pinpoint that event which caused this problem, right? So th that is done using gaining visibility stage. And once we have established, okay, so this is the problem, then comes stage three, which is managing access. So what this basically will do is, it will give you a list of users in case we are tracking the who, it will give you a list of users who have access and we will pinpoint the user who did that, right? And that user can be wiped out of the FIS system using the managing access stage, right? So these are the stages which are involved in cloud security. Now, if we were to implement these stages in AWS, how would we do that? Let's see that. So the first stage was monitoring data, right? So if you have an application in AWS and you are experiencing this same kind of thing, what will you do for monitoring data? So you have a service in AWS called AWS CloudWatch. Now what is AWS CloudWatch? So basically it's a cloud monitoring tool. So you can monitor your EC2 and your other AWS resources on CloudWatch. How you can monitor them? You can monitor the network in, network out of your resource, and you can also monitor the traffic which is coming on to your instance, right? Uh, you can also create alarms on your CloudWatch. So if there's deviation from normal system behavior, like I said, so it'll create an alarm for you. It'll escalate the event and alert you about that thing so that you can go on and, and see what that problem actually is, right? So this is cloud, the monitoring tool, right? So this was about AWS CloudWatch. Let me give you a quick demo of how the AWS CloudWatch dashboard actually looks like. Okay guys, so, so this is your AWS dashboard. So now for accessing CloudWatch, you can go under the management tools. Here is CloudWatch, you'll click on CloudWatch. Now over here, you can monitor anything, right? You'll go to metrics and you can see there are three metrics over here. You can monitor your EBS, you can monitor your EC2, you can monitor your S3, right? Now, say suppose I want to monitor my EC2. So as you can see, so I have two instances running in my EC2. One is called for batch instance and the other is called WPS instance, right? Now, these are all the metrics which are there. So I can check metrics for my WPS instance for network in. I can check the disk read ops. So let me select the network out metric and there'll be a graph over here. So I can see this graph and as you can see between 6 o'clock and 6.30 I experienced a surge in my traffic, right? So basically this is how you monitor your instance in CloudWatch and you have all these default metrics to check how your instance is doing in your AWS. Right, so this is what CloudWatch is. You can also set alarms here, right? So if you go to alarms, click on create alarm, uh, you'll go to EC2, and you can select your metric from over here. Now I've selected discrete bytes over here. Now once I do that, it'll ask me if there's a time range to which I want to monitor that instance, right? Okay, let's not set any time range. Let's click on next. So when you click next, you will be prompted with this page. So you can set your alarm name. You can set your alarm description here and then you can specify that for what read writes uh, number you should get this alarm for, right? So you will be setting that over here. After that, you will go to actions. So once an alarm is triggered, where should that alarm go? Who should that alarm go to, right? So you can set it over here. Now, whenever the state is alarm, right, what should we do? So when the state is alarm, you can send your notification to your SNS topic. Uh, now what is SNS? Uh, SNS? So basically it's a notification service. We'll be discussing what SNS is in the next session. Uh, don't worry if you don't understand. So basically for now what you can understand is that SNS is a protocol wherein you set if you get a notification what to do with that notification or whom to send to that notification, right? So if uh, there's a topic called notify me in SNS, so in notify me, I have configured an email address that is my email address that whenever a notification comes to the SNS service or the notify me topic to be precise, it sends an email to me, right, with that message. So I'll get a message with this alarm that so, such and such thing that has happened in CloudWatch. 
now you do whatever is required the other thing that you can do over here is in the same SNS topic you can also configure a lambda function to be executed right now what that lambda function will do so say suppose I configure the metric to be of CPU usage right and I say whenever the 40% metric is crossed create an alarm or like go to an alarm state and it notifies the SNS notify me topic about this in the notify me topic I can configure a lambda function to clear all the background processes in that EC2 instance right so if I do that the CPU usage will automatically come down right so this becomes a use case that you want to launch a lambda function whenever your CPU usage goes beyond 40 percent right and hence this is the way you would do it so this was about CloudWatch. There's nothing much to it. You create alarms and you monitor metrics, right? Moving ahead, uh, let's move on to the second process, which is gaining visibility. So for gaining visibility, basically you have to track your whatever activity is happening in your AWS account. So there's a service in AWS called CloudTrail, right? So the CloudTrail service is basically a logging service wherein uh, each and every log to each and every API call is made. Now how is it useful? Let's talk about the security perspective, right? So uh, your hacker got access to your system. So you should know how he got access to your system. So if you have a time frame, uh, say he got access to your system or you started to face the problem, say around 4 o'clock, right? So you can set the time between 2 o'clock and whatever the time is right now and monitor what all has been going around. And hence you can identify the place where that hacker got access to your system, right? Now this is the part where you'll get to know who that person actually is or you can isolate the problem or which caused that. So if you take a cue from our Facebook example, over here you can actually pinpoint who is responsible for those spam messages. Because you'll all have those logs, right? You'll see the origin of those messages. Now once you've done that, the next step is managing this guy out of the system or wiping this guy out of the system. But before that, let me show you guys how CloudTrail actually looks like. So let's go back to our AWS dashboard and go to our CloudTrail service. So again, under the management tools, you have the CloudTrail service. You'll click on the CloudTrail service and you will reach this dashboard. All right, so here you have the logs. So as you can see, you can set the time range here, but I'm not doing that. I'm just showing you the logs. So even for logging into my console, um, it is showing me that I've logged into my console at this time, on this date, right? So every event is logged, guys. Every event that is happening on your AWS console is being logged. So let's talk about the S3 bucket. So somebody deleted a bucket and that has again been logged, right? So it happened at 7.38 p.m. on 28th of March 2017, right? So any activity, any kind of activity which happens in AWS would be logged over here. Okay, guys, so this was about CloudTrail. So let's go back to our slide and move ahead in today's session. So like I said, so now you have identified who is responsible for your problem, right? So now the next step is managing access, right? So now you should be able to throw that person or remove that person from the system. So most of the times what happens is, like if you take our Facebook use case, so basically there was a user who triggered that problem, right? So the two things that you have to do is, first of all, you have to remove that spam from your system. So you've got to know where it originated, so now you start wiping it. After that, you have to debar that user from doing it again. Right? So from the source, you'll get to know who that user is. Now using managing access, you will actually get access to do all that. Right? So if you talk about AWS, this service is called AWS IAM. So what AWS IAM does is, it basically authenticates that particular service. Now you are a root user, right? So you can do anything. But what if you have employees and obviously all employees will not have all the rights, right? Now, what if you want to give granular permissions to your employees? Now, for like in our example, what if one specific employee is capable to track down this problem, right? Or track down what has to be done. So you can give that particular person the rights. How? Using IAM, right? So IAM is used to provide 
granular permissions it actually secures your access to the EC2 instances by giving you a private file and also it is free to use right so let's see how IAM is used so let me go back to my AWS console okay guys so this is my AWS dashboard I'll go to the security identity and compliance domain and I'll click on IAM right now over here I'll click on roles now I can see all the roles which are there in my IAM right so since I would have identified which role is creating a problem so I'll go to that role so for example uh, I have a problem in say AWS Elastic Beanstalk EC2 role right I'll click on this now once I click I will be getting this screen so now I can see the permissions, the trust relationships, the access advice and the revoke sessions, right? So I'll go to revoke sessions and I'll click on revoke active sessions and hence I'll be able to wipe out that user from accessing my AWS resources, right? So this is how you use IAM guys. Uh, now one more thing that you can do over here is you'll go back to your dashboards, go to roles. Now like I told you guys, you can actually create a role for a person who will be able to access restricted uh, things on your AWS account right so let me quickly show you how you can do that so you will click on create new role and you will give your role some name so let's give it hello over here right click on next step go to role for identity provider access right and now you can select how that user of yours will be accessing your AWS account right so allow users from Amazon Cognito Amazon Facebook Google ID all right so let's select this now let us select Facebook and let's give it some random application ID right so anyway is not going to create this role I'm just telling you guys how to do it right so basically you get your application ID by Facebook over there you'll be uh, since you are using Facebook to authenticate that guy to your AWS account you'll get an application ID by going on to graph.facebook.com you can do all of that over there okay so that is not the concern you will enter the application ID and click on next step right so you'll get the policy document so whatever you configured in your text boxes has actually been created in a JSON uh, file right so you don't have to edit anything over here click on next step now you have to attach a policy now what is the policy so policy is basically what all permissions you want to grant that user right so if you want to grant him the execution role for lambda you can do that you can grant him the s3 execution role right so whatever policy that you create you can actually create a policy in your IAM right I'm not going much in details of this because all of this is covered in your IAM session but I'm showing you guys because as I just told you guys how this can be done so let me show you how it can be done right so you'll select whatever policy you want and click on next step and review it and create that rule this is it guys right so you can actually select a policy whatever policy you want that role to have and hence so policy is basically a permission that you want that role to have so if he gets a permission to just review your instances he'll be only able to review your instances okay one more thing I want to make clear is that you don't have to give your security credentials to that guy anymore because now you'll be specifying that user will be able to connect to Facebook okay so also you have a part here wherein you can specify what specific user can access it right so uh, I can type in my name here and if I'm being logged in through Facebook if my username is Heyman Sharma only then I'll be able to connect to my AWS account right now this is ID right so I can also set the locale parameter right so ID I think is fine wherein uh, you will be adding the ID of the guy who whom you want this AWS account be accessed by right so uh, you all have Facebook IDs right so you all have to just punch in your Facebook IDs over here click on next step and then you'll be able to access this AWS account if I create this role right now with the policies that I'll be attaching to your role right so this is how you use IAM guys let us go back to our session okay so these are the three services guys so you have IAM you have CloudTrail and you have CloudWatch using which you can control or you can actually see what is going on in your AWS account 
all right so guys this brings us to the end of our session anything that you're not clear of you can ask me right now okay so Akriti is clear so is Jason Shivani is clear as well Bebek Matthew okay guys so since most of you are giving me a go let me wrap up today's session so thank you for attending this session guys I hope you learned something new today I have attached the assignments in your LMS and I expect you guys to complete your assignments in by the next session also the practicals that we've done today I want you to try them on your own I didn't execute them to the fullest that was because of the shortage of time but you do that right if you have any problems you can contact our support team right they're always at your disposal 24 7 All right guys so see you in the next session thank you for attending today's session goodbye I hope you enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply to them at the earliest do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to our Edureka channel to learn more happy learning